the facts show that Jack Nicholas is the greatest golf ever because he's won the most major championships and that's what you've got to base it do, on. Do you think- so welcome down to the Rick Shields Golf Show podcast, everybody. I'm your host, Rick Shields. I'm here with producer Guy, co-host Guy Chasse. It's a weird one because it's like, this is this is not the podcast. This is an official podcast, this. This is an off-the-record YouTube exclusive. You will not hear or see this anywhere else in the world bar this channel. <laughs> Where else would you see it in the world other than this channel anyway? <laughs> so normally, each podcast, each week, we obviously do an audio version. We film it as well. We put it on YouTube as a film version on the second channel. And then the audio version goes on all of the f- all of your favourite podcast platforms. Mm-hmm. Now, the 101 episode yep. had a little glitch. Matt behind the camera balls it up. Matt, who... Destroyed it. Basically, yeah. He used the wrong hard drive and it didn't save. So we've not got a video format. But I thought you guys on YouTube should not miss out on a YouTube video just because of Matt. No. Really? I hate Matt at a minute. (laughs) I know hate's strong. At this moment in time, Matt, I hate you. (laughs) I'm joking. We we have to do a special version. But either way, we're going to touch on a few things we talked about in the podcast. But also, a lot of things have happened over the weekend anyway, which we didn't talk about on the podcast um well, just a quick note though joke aside if you do love the podcast obviously the full audio one we'll put a link in the, as the pinned comment in the description you can listen to that full length we'll go over a few of the same topics on here as well that we covered i yeah, think yeah. um but like you said a lot happened this weekend talk to me well let's even go back one step this is the first youtube video we've done after the live show yes how good was it it was very good enjoyed it yeah. It feels a long time ago now. It feels ages it? ago now. When we last did the when the last podcast actually got recorded, which was Thursday, it felt like it was so recent to the live yeah. show. Now the weekend's been and gone. It feels like the live show was forever ago. So thank you to everybody that came to the live show. It was an incredible success. We we sold out the Lowry Theatre. Four hundred and fifty odd people attended from all around the country, and I believe some international uh, fans came in as well to come and watch. Uh, we put on a performance of an hour and a half long. We managed to raise a, a couple of grand. Total figures haven't been calculated just yet even now but we managed to raise a couple of grand for christie's hospital in manchester which is a cancer charity hospital um so amazing again thank you for all your support with that and it just went down really well we had john robbins on it we had tubes and Ange. we had james robinson sophie walker you were fantastic you won a couple of prizes which you've got there on the desk I have indeed so this we had a challenge it, who could chop six golf balls up in the quickest time yes i won you did. I think I was 50-odd seconds and you were 48 seconds. Well, I've watched the footage back because I couldn't believe I won that. But actually, yeah. what happened is I started off really, really slowly and then weirdly got pace towards the end. This is the trophy I got that you made that you probably thought you were going to win. I did, I must admit. I made it. Really nice trophy. This obviously is on video, so I can show this to the camera. That's my trophy. <laughs> it is. Ah. It's nice. And and the glue somehow is still holding those uh, those pipe cutters at the top of the There's golf There's one ball. issue, though, isn't there? It was going to go on my shelf behind us. It doesn't quite fit. It's a bit, about an inch too tall. It, it might just sit there sit forever. forever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it went really well. Um, and again, thank you for everybody watching and supporting. And hopefully we might do lives again. Might be a yearly thing. We might do it around certain dates. Um, it was nice to do it for the 100th episode. And again, thank you for all your support to getting us to 100 episodes, mm. which is amazing. Um, yeah, lots of things have happened this weekend. Yes. Roy McElroy won again. He did. C- CJ Cup in Vegas. Um, I didn't watch loads of it. I saw little clips of, of YouTube content and snippets. Um, it's nice to see him playing well again. It was really interesting hearing his post-round interviews, talking about after the, the devastating blow of the Ryder Cup and how he felt like he really didn't he really underperformed mm-hmm. and he was kind of very emotional after the Ryder Cup. He's kind of come back here this week and really said he doesn't have to be somebody else. He needs to be Rory McIlroy. What does he mean by that, though? I think, you know what? I honestly believe, and we saw glimpses of this through lockdown last year, I believe he was trying to chase certain players. Let's say Bryson. So Bryson is bombing out there at the moment, which we'll talk about in a moment. Rory has always been known for being one of the longest hitters in the world, and now he's maybe not. Now he's kind of slipping down that ranking a little bit. And I think he's then gone on this kind of journey to try and be somebody that he, he he's not. He's gone for more distance. He's trying to get more power. He might be trying to also search perfection in his golf swing. You know, he's moved coaches recently from his from his childhood coach, mm-hmm. um, Michael Bannon. Michael Bannon now going over to um, Pete Cowan. Is that right? Yeah, he's gone to Pete Cowan. Um, yeah, it's a massive like change again. Is he making is he making big change in his golf swing? Is he trying to change technique? Um, 
you could look at his last couple of seasons and say that it's it's below par for his ability. He's not kind of set the world on light. He's he's without a major for many many years now. So seven I think, years it's been. That's crazy, isn't it? For someone who's as good as Rory McIlroy, seven years seems a long time not to have won a major. But it's interesting. I think after seeing that performance at the weekend, I know it was a, it was kind of a, a very low scoring golf course. I think the, the total score was like twenty five under par for the for the four rounds of golf, which is phenomenal. It'll be really interesting to see if he kind of builds on this momentum, gets a really good off season in, starts the new year strong, and actually has a really really good two thousand twenty two. I, I want to see him play better again. I think his, his ability is phenomenal, and I would definitely love to see him win majors. Um, I mean, where is he in the world ranking now? Just having a look. That's the thing, though. You think he's been bad. He's still he's world number eight. Okay. So he came up from 14 to eight after that win. But right. he's not been, obviously, Roy McIlroy form last few years, but he's still been up, up and about there a lot of the time, hasn't he? I think when someone is so good at such a young age, that you really just expect to be there forever, don't I feel, you? I feel like he has been around forever. Well, he has. It's... 2000 and was it 12 his first major I think it was was that the open at Carnoustie he's not won the open at Carnoustie no when he uh, sorry the one he first played in is it, is it, are you saying the one he won I think his first yeah his first major was I, I'm trying to, I'm thinking of of young he might have been it was the PGA I know oh, so his US Open was his first in 11 actually I thought it was 12 so 11 what I was getting confused with then I thought we were talking about when he kind of first hit the scene oh he won the silver medal at um, I'm sure that was Carnoustie let's have a look I yeah, know, 2007. Well, that would have been when Harrington won, wouldn't it? And do you remember, he was like, all like, either Jay Lindbergh door, but he had... It was Oakley as well, I think, after that, wasn't it? And Oakley, then to Oakley straight into it. He had this massive kind of barnet going on. Um, so 14 years he's been on the scene. Which is crazy. It is. It? Well, he's only 33, I think. 32. So he, he probably gets a hard time because of, of his stardom so quickly. But, um, you know... He, he, he wouldn't like to have been 14th in the world, I'm sure. I don't know how much these players really think about world ranking, but, you know, it's nice that he's got back in the top 10. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how he kind of goes ahead. Because the names above him now, John Rahm, yeah. Dustin Johnson, Colin Marikawa, Patrick Cantley, Xander Shoffley, Bryson DeChambeau, Justin Thomas. It's a weird one. I think they obsess over world ranking. Yeah. I think they will do. Like, we obsess about being the biggest YouTube channel or whatever, yeah. the biggest podcast. I, I would obsess about world well, ranking. I th- no, I think they do, 100%. But equally... They're that good, it doesn't necessarily define them. So just because Rory's world number eight, if he's going to the Masters in two weeks' time, let's just say, obviously it's not, but if it was, he's not going to feel, oh, I'm only eighth in the world. He's yeah. going to think, I'm the best in the world. Yeah. So it's one of those weird things where it probably means so much to them, but yet they can't let it become like... Because also you have like... Most majors, Rory is one of the odds on, isn't he? Yeah. Top three or four, even kind of irrespective of his world ranking. Yeah, and and so was Tiger when Tiger's come back before, even when he's not been playing that well. It's almost like... When you've won a major before and you can multiple times and you show that you can do it, that stands for so much, doesn't it? It really does. And then over in the European Tour, again, somebody who's maybe not been in the winning circle that often, Matt Fitzpatrick, or often recently, Matt Fitzpatrick. Um, the contrast of scoring, because this was played at Valderrama, one of the hardest golf courses kind of in, in Europe. Uh, the grand score there was six under par <laughs> for 72 holes. Uh, and our mate, Min Woo Lee, came second. Yeah, three under. Three under par, and he, he had a really strong charge coming home. He didn't kind of, there was an eagle put on the 17th, which I cannot believe didn't go in. It looked like it was in all the way. I don't think it would have obviously been enough to kind of win or put, but it might have just put a bit of pressure on Matt Fitzpatrick. Um, but that golf course is one that I kind of want to play, but it kind of scares me because mm. it's so difficult. I've, I've, I think I've been there to watch an event when I was young. And like you said, every time there's an event, I mean, six under is obviously an amazing golf score. But for four rounds, like these guys can go so deep, can't they? It must be absolutely solid. I'm just looking. Was there so, any horrendous scores? So John, sounds... John Rahm. Yeah. Best player in the world. First round, shot 78. Shot 74, missed the cut. So it's like, that's how... Diff- and, and he's played that place loads and loads mm-hmm. and loads of times before. He actually played it just the week before and did pretty well. Um... But would, like that's crazy. Would you rather watch the tour pros? Like, so obviously there's that contrast this week. Would you rather watch them at a course they rip up and go super deep, or one that challenges them and they kind of shoot more around level par? What a great question. Um, I, I, or does it not matter because the best golfer is always going to win? Yeah, but from a spectacle, I think I want I want to see lots of birdies mm. from a spectacle. So I would probably have watched more if I had the two options. You can watch this golf event and the winning score is going to be 25 under or watch this golf event and the winning score is going to be six under 
I'd probably go 25 under. Yeah. Because I like seeing players go 7, 8, 9, making lots and lots of birdies, personally. Yeah, but then but then equally, if it was holes with a going driver, chipping a wedge to three foot, knocking it in, or the going driver, smash six iron to, tw- to 15 foot, just, like, do you get what I mean? It's yeah. different levels of golf, it isn't it? Of course it is. And, and going back to, like, Valderrama, you know, the, for me, just personally, I don't mind seeing golfers struggle at a Lynx golf course when it's when it's really difficult and it's really challenging and the weather conditions are like ridiculous and everybody is kind of struggling. I sometimes think with a golf course like Valderrama, it's almost it's so tripped up, it's so difficult and and tree lined and slopey and fast. It's like it feels a bit crazy golfy mm. almost in a way. I do think typically a lot of people do like seeing the golf at the tour pros have a bit of a tough time. I would almost imagine most people watching this video would prefer to see them struggle. Mm -hmm. Leave a comment down below, actually. Do you prefer seeing a really, really low score in a golf event or do you like to see the golf pros struggle? That'd be really interesting. I like to see both, which is weird, isn't it? I like seeing a mixture. Mm. I wouldn't want to see 25 under all the time, but I do quite like seeing a player shooting like 10 under. Yeah. Something quite like, whoa, that's like crazy. Yeah. But I understand why people would like to see him strug- like see him struggle a little bit as well. It's just because it makes it more relatable, doesn't it? If you see a golfer hitting like you don't want to see them hit good shots and get punished, obviously, because that's just not fair. But when you see them on a hole where there's like not much room to miss or whatever, yeah. and then they go in the furry bunker and then they have to chip out sideways and they put yeah. it to the side of green, they don't go up and down, make a bogey, or whatever. It is quite nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. You like you yeah. Well, one thing we spoke about, Rick, actually, on the podcast, which obviously is out now, the audio version. Which Matt ruined. Which Matt absolutely destroyed. What's the best word? To, just ruined? Is that, or, or destroyed, or... You know, you know what was baffled, so... I'm going to have a look for last, all the words to destroyed. Last Thursday, we did the podcast, and we... we it was one of our best ever. Yeah. Arguably one of our best ever. And, uh... We recorded it, probably went for just over an hour, and me and Guy went back into our kind of office space, and Matt was finishing off, doing the, doing the little bits of recordings, and he came out like he'd... He came out into the room that we were in, me and Guy, <laughs> and he looked like he, he looked like he'd seen a ghost. He did. His face was completely white, and he was like, "Lads, um, might be an issue." I was like, "Oh no, what's it going to be?" And there's, there's been faults before. Sometimes things have not gone our way. Small faults, admittedly. Small faults, yeah. very, very. I mean, tiny faults. Like we've lost like the lens cap of a, yeah, of a camera, yeah. whatever. I snapped a tea. A battery wasn't quite charged. Yeah. Right, little tiny things. And he said. I don't think the video is recorded. Well, some some words that you could use apparently are destroy, demolish, pull down, dismantle, wreck, ruin, shatter. Um, yeah, there's quite a blemish, devastate. Ouch. I like all of them. Yeah, I do. A blend of all of them. <laughs> Balls up us on there as well and bugger up. <laughs> so, as you can see, Rick, I'm wearing my Tiger Woods t-shirt. You are. For... Two reasons, I like it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, there's rumours that you know a little bit more. Well, the thing is, I don't know how to act like I don't know the answer to this because we've done the podcast already. So if anyone's flicking over to the two, it's like I'm trying to act. But anyway, Tiger Woods is potentially back. Yes. He's getting close to fitness. Yeah. He's been sitting on the on the course, holding the club next to his son. Talk to me. Yeah, well, ru- rumour has it that Tiger is planning his return, mm. potentially for a big event next year. <laughs> Whether that's going to be the Masters whether it's going to be the 150th Open Championship at St. Andrews, the home of golf. Holy mother. Um, or whether it's for the CJ Cup next October in Vegas. Or the, the Rick Shields Golf Podcast <laughs> annual <laughs> event at Marriott Worsley Park. So we're not, we're not sure yet. I'm finding details, but promising signs that he does sound like he's not only walking around, it not only seems like he's getting recovery, it's not only seeming like he's able to do things that, we maybe thought was impossible, there may be a glimmer of chance that Tiger Woods is going to be seen out on the golf course again. A chance of seeing Tiger Woods potentially winning golf events again. Potentially seeing Tiger Woods overcome Jack Nicklaus's record and become the greatest golfer of all time, undisputed. You know what's weird, though, about it is, obviously that's what I want, and you do, and a lot of people listening, watching, etc. do, but, like... Are we getting carried away? Like, what is realistic? Is it like, because I don't know, obviously none of us do, exactly how bad it actually was, the crash yeah. and everything, and all the wear and tear he's already got in his body. But like, 
is him just playing golf again an unbelievable success story that like he will be so happy about because he can just enjoy the game with his young son and his family and stuff? Is it a case where, like you said, he might get back playing competitively and making the odd cut? Yeah. Or is it a case they go on and dominate? You just that's you don't know, and that's kind of what's weirdly daunting but exciting about it. Well, that is what's exciting. I remember last time when he kind of made his return quite a few years ago now, it was like, oh, is he going to be the same Tiger Woods? And at first he never looked like he was going to be, and a lot of people ruled him out incorrectly because he did come back and he did win and he won the Masters and, and he, he proved people mm. wrong. So I never want to kind of say he's not going to prove people wrong, but you're probably right. For me at the moment, I'm, I'm just happy to see there's there's – there's maybe light at the end of the tunnel. Whatever that's going to look like, what, however Tiger Woods is going to be involved in golf, can only be a positive for golf, really. Yes. Uh, and for him and for his family, and like I say, it's 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 a it's a different Tiger now. You know, he's he's he is a, a dad. He's got commitments to his family. You know, he I'm sure he wants to just go and play nine holes with his son when he when he can. You know, so mm-hmm. his his goals might have changed don't think they have but his his ambitions might be different like he might be thinking i just want to get on the golf course again to to compete and to you know have a bit of a wander walk around <laughs> do, do you think though realistically forget about in well i was gonna say forget about the injury we can't that is part of it but like he's won 15 majors now yeah. technically he's got 18 so he needs three to tie four to win obviously we just said then about how Rory hasn't won a major for seven years yeah. and how good he's been in that time. he's had some off points admittedly but how good he's been you know, in fact, let me just quickly... How many... Has, has Dustin Johnson won three majors? Uh, I think he has... Or even two? Three. Quickly, I'll find this. Three, Quick. I think. Um, he's won two. Oh, wow. So, Tiger has still got a win to beat Jack Nicklaus a four. So, double what Dustin Johnson has had in his whole career. Mm-hmm. He's got is, a- it, is it going to happen? And I want it to, and I don't understand. I, oh, I'd love it to. I'd love to witness it. Is it going to happen realistically? If you had to bet your house on it now, <sighs> and don't don't think of the Tiger fan, hand on heart, what do you actually believe? I I, I don't think I would bet my house on it, um, but I don't know what I'd bet on it. Fifteen pounds. Yeah, yeah, higher. <laughs> I'd go higher than that. Um, would you actually? Is that your heart speaking though? Was it genuine? Put hand on heart now, thinking with your everything, really like. Do you think he's going to win four more major championships? My head tells me no. My heart tells me yes. Like is that a wish though? Of course it, it is. Yeah. yeah, of course it is. It, it's it's it's. I want to have lived in the time frame where we saw the greatest golfer ever live, yeah. undisputed. That that's it. I think he'll still go down as that, but there'll always be that little asterisk, won't there? There's always yeah. going to be that question mark, like you said. Nobody can have a, a a real argument or a discussion around who's the best player ever because, unfortunately, the facts... Well, it's not unfortunately, but the facts show that Jack Nicklaus is the greatest golfer ever because he's won the most major championships, and that's what you've got to base it do, on. Do you think then, because I, again, huge, huge Tiger fan, in my opinion, obviously, I was born in the year 1990, so I literally followed his rise from when I first started playing golf at 96, 97. To me, he'll always be my favourite golfer and the best golfer. But when I say the best golfer, again, I'm speaking with my heart. In in order for any, anybody to be the best at anything, there typically has to be a quantifiable number of what that might be, whether it be long jump, a javelin, uh, whatever it may anything. If you golf majors one, he's four behind. He's three behind, sorry. Yeah. If you go off, I think even actual events won, he's not had as many as Nicholas, has he? Um, I don't think he has. I don't think he has. Golf. Um, So you have to measure it off something. You can't measure it off how he's changed the game and how we feel about him. You have to measure it off events. And majors is what, obviously, professional golf typically goes off. Yeah. Uh, Yes. Well, no, he's tied with Sam Snead. For number one. <clears throat> for most wins. Well, okay then. So if he wins more wins, would that give him potentially possibly the, the goat state? Well, he is the goat in my opinion. But would that give him the status? They're both on eighty-two. What was Nick? What was Jack Nicholas on then? Seventy-three. All oh, right. Okay. And, um, but you know what's mad as well? Not this kind of matters. But how many second place majors crazy. Jack Nicholas got? Oh, to, to contrast that, so has Tiger. So many top ten finishes. Mm. Maybe not second place, but so many top ten finishes. Um, another one going back to this. Tiger has got to win the same amount of majors Rory currently has. Well, that's it. So I've pulled this up now. So you've got Tom Morris Jr. and Tom Morris Sr. 
both have got four. Yeah. Right. Ernie Els, four. Rory, four. Brooks Kepka, four. You know, these are all. I mean, they're still in, still still going. But yeah. then you've got VJ Singh, three. Harrington, three. Spieth, three. And these are all people. Even if Spieth never played golf again, he's, he's going actually, down. He's, 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 he's going to be in the hundred percent. The golf hall of fame, isn't it? Greg Norman, two. Bernard Langer, two. Mark right, O'Meara, two. Like you look at some of those, like. To, winning a major, obviously, is unbelievable. Winning multiple majors is ridiculous. So it just puts that into some level of perspective without sounding kind of negative how much of a challenge it is. But, oh, my days, I hope he does it. I hope he does it. And you look at the list below Nicholas and Tiger, like Walter Hagen, 11, Ben Hogan, 9, Gary Player, 9, Tom Watson, 8, Arnold Palmer, 7. I mean, these are absolute legends. Yeah. Sam Snead, Gene Saracen, Bobby Jones, Harry Varden, Nick Faldo's won six, Phil Mickelson's won six, Seve's won six, uh, Seve's won five. Like, the ma- I mean, to win a major is astronomical. I mean, it almost weirdly again puts into perspective 18 major championships, Jack Nicholas. Like, it is. I-, I almost forget how incredible that is. Yeah. Because we didn't live through 100%. it. 100%. And you know what else is mad? I've said, said this to you before, I don't know if it's on podcast or off, but. I remember so vividly that Phil Mickelson was the best golfer to not have won a major. Yes. Because I'm looking at his first one was in 04, so I would have been like 13. Mm. So I was well into my golf then. Yeah, and he'd never, and now he's won six. And what's also, I saw a status today that I think Rory becomes the, is it the fifth or sixth youngest ever to win 20 times the PJ Tour? I believe. Oh, right, okay. And Phil Mickelson was ahead of him. So Phil Mickelson, by the age of 32, was already an established legend, but he didn't win his first major till I think 33 or 34. Christ so if you think man. about that, like again, I can vaguely remember, I can remember that, but how good of a golf Phil Mickelson was before he won his first major, yeah. and now he's won six. And once he won that first one, he went on a, on a run, and obviously won even just last year, or this year. Sorry, he won his, his most previous. Yeah, yeah, 2021. Yeah, yeah, his most previous this major was this year. So, yeah, I mean... I, I, I don't know. Oh, I've got another weird say, stat, though. I want to say, yes, he's going to do it, but I'm not sure. So, you ready for this? Jack Nicholas is winning span for majors. His first one was 1962, okay? Yeah. His last one was 1986, so what? 24 years. Yeah. Tiger's first was in 1997. How many years later is that now? 20, I don't know the last, 23? 24 years? 24 now, right now? Yep. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Wow. So there you go. It's possible, but who knows? Don't rule him out. Yeah. Now, we did just briefly, last again on the podcast, we're kind of repeating ourselves a little bit, but I think you guys, the YouTube viewers, should have this discussion as well. Um, Mr. DeChambeau, Bryson mm-hmm. DeChambeau, um, loved him at the Ryder Cup. Yeah. I found that he was phenomenal. The, the, the fact he was absolutely bombing the golf ball, hitting it a ridiculous miles, uh, really captivated the kind of atmosphere of the Ryder Cup. Um, we got a couple of comments saying we hadn't touched on the Ryder Cup. We did do in the podcast recently, but um, America, well done. You absolutely smashed us to bits. It was a dominating performance. The USA team was ridiculously better. Um, I think there was a slight unfair advantage just because you, you've got such, it was a home advantage anyway for the USA. And then we had no support mm. there really at all, which you could say is a slight disadvantage for us. But I think even if it was a normal Ryder Cup year and we had all our fans out there, I think the USA team was just far too strong. Yeah. And it slightly worries me because the the how young the USA team is, I think they're going to dominate for a long, long time. Like DJ is their oldest player and he's still in the prime of his golf. This is why though, jokes aside, I've had this discussion before the Ryder Cup's overrated and blah, blah, blah. And obviously people don't like it when I say that, which I understand because it's so held in such high regard. I do enjoy it when it's on. But the only thing I find difficult is if you're like a, foot, a soccer fan in America, but a football fan over here, when the season finishes, you've got so much chat before the next season because of the signings you may get, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But with the Ryder Cup now, you say, what you're saying is correct. They've got such a good team and they've got such a good amount of youngsters in that they're only going to get probably get better. But we want to be at the Ryder Cup now for another twenty three months, really. Yeah. So it's like it and, just kind of goes out of everyone's mind and it comes back in again. And the team might be totally it could different. Be. Then. You know, it could it could be, you know, and it has happened before where a winning team like. There's no guarantees those same the twelve players for twelve players are gonna be in, in two years' time no. at all. Like it's gonna be a completely different mix again. I do like the Ryder Cup, I, I do, but I just wish that it would be good if it kind of somehow kept some level of do you know I don't know, like I think the U I think 
the USA team described it really well. There was an interview. Or, or there was interviews going on loads. But the USA team play for the USA. Mm-hmm. Like they play for their their country. Like they're proud of. They were born there. That's where. They, that's kind of what who they who they're playing for. The European team play for the team. They play for the European team. Well, that's it because we don't the feel players. The yeah, players yeah. next to them. You know, Rory doesn't want to let you know Matt Fitzpatrick down or Lee Westwood down, and Poulter doesn't want to let you know Shane Lowry down or whatever it may be. Because in Europe, we've not got that connection. That's it. I mean, obviously, with everything going on with Brexit and all sorts, but we've not got that kind of connection because we just don't feel that, do we really? We live, we're in Europe, obviously, but it's not... I'd never say I'm European. Yeah, but that's also, also what's weird in England. If someone said, oh, I'm going to hold him, it's going around traveling around Europe, but you'd say that when you're from England, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Weird, isn't it? Where Americans kind of, or people, are, correct me if I'm wrong, but Americans kind of just put us in that, we're, Euro- we're just mm. Europe. Oh, you're in Europe. I don't know. Yeah. Right, it's an odd one. But um, going back to my point, Bryson was imp- incredibly impressive. Um, he then went on the week after to play in the World Long Drive Championship mm-hmm. and came eighth, I, th- I think we said in the end. Um, <clears throat> I'm becoming a big fan. I okay. really am. <laughs> I, I just am. I, I think, and even since the podcast on Thursday, I think I've become even more of a bigger fan. Wow, what's changed since just Thursday? Social media is class. It's really good. Like you can, you really getting involved. I'm really getting involved. Do you in regret them. all the stuff you've said on Twitter now, like calling him out about the shouting four and stuff? No, or not? no, he should still, he should still but do d- that. But he should. But like the stance you took, it was quite strong and like called him out. Do you feel like you wish he'd not? We're, have we're just trying to get clicks. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I, on a serious I, note, like I if still, you... I still think there's a couple of things that he he could do better. Just, yeah. just for me, it's more traditions and things like that that he could be shouting for, and he, you know, whatever. But on top of that, I've got to kind of give him a lot of credit because of what he's doing for golf, the excitement. Like when when I'm on Instagram, this is a good barometer, and I'm going flicking through Instagram stories. I'm excited to see his his circle at the top of the page now. Question then: He's obviously getting massive on social media, and he wants to be growing his YouTube channel and his other stuff. Does a part of you feel like I'm guessing? Obviously, he'd love to collaborate with him. Do you ever feel like because of all the full stuff on Twitter that he might be like, no, no. Or he might not do, yeah. Do you reckon he wouldn't, be, he wouldn't even know? Do you reckon he'll know about that? Um, yeah, I think he would. I think do you reckon he'd, he'd be, be bothered it. or not? Who knows? We'll find out, eh? Should we collaborate? Why don't you invite him to collaborate now and see what happens? Bryson, if you're watching... I'm really sorry. About, <laughs> I'm really, I'm really, really sorry about all the four stuff. I uh, know. First off, what you're doing for the game, game of golf is phenomenal. Keep it up. Um, you're really changing the game. If you ever want to do a collaboration, let's do a collaboration. You can teach me how to hit the ball a long way. I'll teach you how to shout four <laughs> in a safe, responsible way. Um, I no, think a collaboration with Bryce would be sick. I think there would be a lot of. That'd be a really popular video. You know what, though, as well? Like, speaking about, I know we are kind of obsessed with social media to some degree, obviously, but like from watching his actual YouTube videos, I was a fan of what he was doing for the game in terms of the distance stuff. And obviously, I'd seen that the not shouting for wasn't overly keen on that, jokes aside. But from watching his YouTube channel and certainly the behind the scenes stuff, you do see him as a kind of normal 20 something lad with his mates chilling with him. And it actually, I think so, and as nice as a lad he is, so many other people could do that as well and, and, yeah. and make you feel more connected with them. Because it's like, it is hard sometimes. You see them on the golf course hitting golf shots. You see them in an interview afterwards where they might be quite kind of standard, like, yeah, you know, I've hit it quite well today. I need to work on my chipping, da, da, da. And it's quite like almost semi-robotic. Not as much in golf as in like football. I think it's very robotic yeah, yeah, in football. So well media trained. But it, it, even then we spent time with Min Woo Lee, you see this lad in real life and what he's into and his stuff. And you actually become so more, so much more connected with them. I think... Yeah. So many more golfers, if they've got the time, like should should do more on social media to yeah. get that fan base. Not even for making money, but just to let people in a bit more. Yeah, no, you're dead right. And I, I feel like what you... I'll tell you where I really... Again, going back to... I, I watched more clips since, again, the podcast was on Thursday. Him on that Full Send podcast with mm-hmm. the Nelk boys. Yeah. And, I mean, it's a real... It's completely removed from golf. I mean, it's so different. Uh, I mean... Those guys are absolutely crazy. But you saw a totally different Bryson again. Like, you saw... I felt like he was a guy... I could hang around with that guy. But do you, do you not think, though, as well? I completely agree. It's kind of... So that should be obvious, because when you think about it, when you're playing golf, you act differently playing golf than yeah. you would just chilling. Certainly if you're playing golf with other people and you're playing golf for money and you're playing golf professionally, 
it's very hard to be yourself and to, and to well, not to be yourself, but well, yeah, to show the other side of you. Yeah. And that's why every, every now and again, when you get that kind of golfer that does, i.e. a Seve or like a John Daly or a Beef, yeah. they get massive amount of like loyalty and fans because they are a bit different. Whereas somebody like, again, no disrespect, but Matt Fitzpatrick, he might be an unbelievably nice lad and I'm sure he is and they're cool. But I'll never see him as being a golfer. Correct. And I'd like to see more of that side of their life, but it's difficult, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, and some, some of them might not want to share it. They might want to keep things yeah. private and get all that. Completely. Um, but honestly, I feel like what Bryson's kind of doing at the moment, with not only what, what he's doing on the golf course and his golf and how he's changing the game, how he's hitting the ball further, I, I honestly believe he's going to dominate at some point. I'm not quite sure when it's going to all click into place. I really do think he's going to go on a run, run to dominate. But the fact he's going into that, these long drive tournaments, the fact is he's doing videos with like the Nelk boys and he's doing like really fun things. He's doing that thing with uh, with Brooks Kepka in Vegas where it's him and they're having a, this match for 12 hole match. Yeah. And I might not be dead into that, but it's, it's a bit different. It, it reminds me of kind of maybe what we do on YouTube. Like we like to try and do different things. We like to try and entertain the audience. I feel like he's doing that, but in his own kind of special way. And that, that's what we need. Like we, we've said so many times about how we got into golf massively. Tiger influenced that and certainly kept yeah. you going. And yeah. so many golfers now, if you're under the age of 35, maybe even a bit older, maybe even under 40 pretty much, you, you grow up loving watching Tiger. We do need amazing golfers that play the game very well. But we also need those personalities that can inspire people. Correct. And Bryson, I think he's driving that. Yeah. I mean, again, going back to like personalities, you look at even like Emma Radha, Rad, I can't forget her name now. Radicanu. Radicanu for tennis. Like yeah. She'll be bringing in so many young girls into yeah. tennis because she's fun, she's relatable, she's showing a personality in social media and things like that. And I feel like if, if a sport can capture these stars and they can really propel them into a different level, um, I'm just not sure if, if golf as a, as a whole propels those kind of superstars as high as they could do. Um, it's hard though, isn't it? Because even with football, if you score a goal and you go and celebrate, that can show your personality more, can't yeah, it? Can't. It's like with Gaza with the famous goal when he did the, the thing yeah. we lay down and got the stuff sprayed in his face. It was like the dentist chair. Obviously, he was already known for being a... A character, but yeah. that emphasizes that. But yeah, in golf, it's hard, isn't it? And, and if Bryson smacked a drive and started proper cheering, people might not like that. But actually, that would show his personality more. Yeah, Weird, it's a fine it? balance. It really is because you you are balancing traditions and your, your personality a little yeah. bit. Like you've got to pl please a lot of people in golf. Like mm. there's lots of different age ranges, lots of different backgrounds, which is great. Obviously, that's why golf is so amazing. <clears throat> but you've you've to be really, really popular, you've almost got to relate to every single body that's watching, which is so, so, so hard. Yeah. But, you know, he's doing good. I really like, I'm starting to really, really like him a lot. Well, I've always really liked him. No, you've not. Not I liked have. him as much as I have. I've really, really liked him. I like him more. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like this. This this was kind of quite a nice riff. Yeah. We learned a new word after the live podcast. We're just riffing now. It's little riffs. Um, we didn't want to disappoint you guys as the YouTube audience. Uh, we wanted to put something out there here today. So hopefully you enjoy this little clip. Uh, podcast will be back next week. in It's normal service. Hopefully. Because we're going to employ a new uh, producer. Yeah, so Matt doesn't balls it up. <laughs> Poor Matt. But also, if you've enjoyed this, go and listen to the audio one as well. Because it's a bit like this, but a bit different. And There was a few more elements. We, a few more riff. A few we more. just riffed like an hour. A 55 minute riff it was. How long have we been running this one for, Matt? Perfect. 30 minute ref. Right, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. We'll see you soon.